very good morning my dear students welcome to my fourth class on design of rcc structural elements 10 cb52 in fact in the yesterday's class we were discussing about a few simple problems related to the design of columns and today we will be seeing uh, some more problems and that is what the, the learning outcomes so, few more problems on axially loaded columns as per is 456 2000 so this is what the problem I was just uh, discussing in the previous class. Uh, let us uh, repeat this particular problem so that this can be completed totally. So this is the fourth problem. So design a rectangular column to carry an ultimate load of 2500 kilo Newton. In fact, it is a rectangular column. Ultimate load is given 2500. No need to multiply with 1.5. So that comes only when the load is working load or the service load or the allowable load. The unsupported length of the column is 3 meter. So, the clear height of the column is also given. So, obviously, we need to identify as to what is the minimum eccentricity associated with the column. The ends of the columns are effectively held in position and also restrained against rotation. So, please read this very carefully. The ends means both the ends are effectively held in position. So, the position cannot move, there is no translational effect. Also, restrained against rotation. So, in fact, uh, there is no rotational effects as well at the end, means both the ends of the column are fixed. The grade of concrete and steel, as usual, I have taken M20 and Fe415 respectively and sketch the details of the reinforcement. So, this is a rectangular column and we need to proportion the rectangular column properly, so that the configuration of the transverse reinforcement will be different depending on how the dimension of the column is going to be taken. So, the given information, so you kindly list FCK is 20 mega Pascal, FY is 415 mega Pascal, ultimate load is 2500 kilo Newton. So, as usual, we will be assuming 1 percent of the steel. So, we can assume up to 6 percent, but generally 1 to 2 percent is what the steel provided in a practical column. And with this smaller percentage of steel, so the dimension of the column is going to be slightly larger and with that uh, the minimum eccentricity problem uh, is not going to be very critical. So, that is the reason why we have to always start with a lower percentage of steel greater than the minimum of 0.8. So, in this case we have taken 1 percent of steel. So, area of steel AAC is 1 percent of the gross area. So, this is nothing but 0 0.01 AG. So, obviously, the area of concrete, so AG minus of AAC, AAC in terms of AG is 0 0.01, with that uh, the area of the concrete uh, is 0 0.99 AG. Now, you have the equation for the axially loaded column corresponding to minimum eccentricity permitted by the code. So, according to the code, the load carrying capacity of the column provided the column is short and the minimum eccentricity is satisfied, then PU is equal to 0.4 FCK AC, the load taken by the concrete plus 0.67 FY AAC, the ultimate load taken by the reinforcement. Now, substituting uh, all the parameters appropriately, so 2500 into 1000, so the rest of the things you kindly submit, so substitute 0.4 into 20, so into 0.99 AG, 0.67 FY being 4 on 5 and 0 0.01 AG is uh, what the area of the reinforcement. With that, uh, so we get uh, 10.7 AG as the total, uh, this is 10.7 AG is the value of the right hand side. So, equate that to the load in terms of Newton, so that AG can be calculated. So, AG works, to, works out to be this much. Now, we need to design the rectangular column. So, kindly identify what might be the size if the column is going to be square so that uh, one of the dimension can be increased and the other dimension can be reduced so that we can get a equivalent rectangular column. So, with that, uh, so the size is something like 483 if the column is going to be square and if it is really square, so maybe 500 by 500 uh, would have been the right option, but in this case uh, it is a rectangular column. One dimension need to be reduced and another dimension need to be increased uh, in such a way that uh, the larger dimension is uh, 1.25 to something like 2 times the smaller dimension. So, if you can do that much, so we have uh, taken the size equal to 425. So, this is what uh, the width B and uh, the 
width of the another dimension of the cross section that is uh, 550 mm which is the depth of the column. So, therefore, the area provided uh, in this case is uh, this much it is uh, slightly more than uh, what the area that is really required. So, that uh, there is not much of uh, increase in the area of the concrete. So, the amount of reinforcement has been assumed as uh, 1 percent. So, 1 percent of uh, what the area that is required. So, you kindly take 1 percent of this AG. So, the first four digit. So, that is 2336 mm square is what the area of the reinforcement is. So, we can uh, provide a suitable number of uh, bars. So, you kindly see the dimensions. So, the dimension is uh, more than 400 mm. So, obviously, we need to have two bars onto the uh, width side and also minimum of uh, two bars onto the right side. So, these are the two extra bars in addition to uh, the corner bars. So, obviously, it is eight bars of 20 mm. So, that all the specifications can be taken care of. So, with that, the area of the reinforcement works out to be 2512 mm square. Now, in fact, uh, we have determined the amount of reinforcement assuming that the column is uh, short. So, let us check uh, whether the column is uh, really short or slender. So, how to check the shortness? So, we need to calculate uh, the effective the slenderness ratio based on the effective span of the column. The ends are fixed. Obviously, the effective length in both the direction LEX and LEY is 0.65 into the visible height of the column which is the unsupported length. But uh, sometimes uh, the effective length in both the direction uh, will be different that is along the major axis and along the minor axis and accordingly we need to calculate uh, the slenderness with respect to both the direction. But here we need to calculate uh, the slenderness uh, ratio kindly see here the slenderness ratio with respect to the major axis LEX by D here LEX is uh, same as LEY, but D and B are different. So, LEX by D is uh, this much. So, it is uh, around 4 less than 12 obviously, it is a short column as far as this is concerned. But similarly, LEY by B if we calculate. So, that is uh, based on the B small b that is uh, 425. So, with that uh, so again this is less than uh, 12. So, since LEX by D and uh, LEY by B both are less than 12 the column is uh, uh, treated as short. Now, let us uh, check the minimum eccentricity. So, the minimum eccentricity has to be calculated with respect to both the axis. One is with respect to the major axis of bending, another with respect to the minor axis of bending. So, based on the unsupported length. So, the expression for the minimum eccentricity is uh, E minimum with respect to X is LUX divided by 500 plus uh, D divided by 30. So, for the major axis X X uh, capital D comes into picture and LUX comes into picture. So, LUX is 3000 upon 500 plus capital D is 550 divided by D. So, uh, sorry 30. So, D divided by 30. So, if you calculate this, uh, this is 24.22 mm. So, this is uh, greater than 20 mm. So, you have to calculate uh, these two things and uh, the larger of these two will be the actual eccentricity. So, in this particular case 24.22 mm uh, is what the actual eccentricity. Now, let us uh, check whether the, the column dimension with respect to the major axis can really take this 24.22 mm of eccentricity. So, that is so 24.22 has to be compared to 5 percent of that dimension. So, the dimension being capital D with respect to x. So, that is nothing but uh, 27.5 mm. So, what the eccentricity that has to be considered is 24.22, but the side is uh, um, definitely larger which takes about 27.5. Obviously, the minimum eccentricity is uh, satisfied with respect to the major axis. Now, similarly, we need to calculate uh, the minimum eccentricity with respect to the minor axis also. Now, kindly say with respect to the minor axis, we need the unsupported length with respect to the minor axis. But in this particular uh, problem, the unsupported length with respect to the major axis LUX and also with respect to the minor axis LUY is uh, defined as 3 meter. It could be different also to depending on uh, what is the type of the uh, beams at the junctions of the column ends. Now, in this case LUY is uh, again uh, 3000, so divided by 500 plus B, the dimension in that direction that is 425, so divided by 30, it is 20.17 and minimum of 20 mm is what the eccentricity. So, the maximum of these two as you can see here, it is 20.17. So, thus 
the actual eccentricity is 20.17 mm. So, this is less than 5 percent of the dimension considered. So, that is uh, small b. So, that is uh, 21.25. So, the small dimension being 425 can take 21.25 mm of eccentricity, but what that is uh, uh, to be considered is uh, 20.17. So, since this 20.17 is less than 21.25, so the column is okay with respect to the minimum eccentricity in that direction as well. So, with respect to the major axis and also with respect to the minor axis, the minimum eccentricity criteria is satisfied because of uh, the dimension so selected. So, the formula what we have used uh, to estimate the load carrying capacity, so you can just see here. So, this is what uh, the formula, so this is okay and whatever the dimension we have given that is also ok and uh, the reinforcement 8 bars of 20 mm is also ok. Then what is the next thing? So, next thing is to design the transfer steel. So, students are under the impression that the design of transfer steel is uh, very simple. In fact, it is very simple because uh, we need to identify the diameter of the tie and uh, the spacing, but what is important uh, in the design of column is how to make a proper arrangement of the transfer reinforcement depending on the number of the mine bars. So, in this particular case the number of mine bars are 8 diameter being uh, 8 mm. We can even go for smaller number of bars uh, by increasing the diameter or the number of bars can be increased by decreasing the diameter of the bar like 16 mm or even 12 mm. And accordingly the configuration of the tie will be different. Now, let us see what happens to the transfer steel in this particular uh, rectangular problem. So, the diameter of the tie as you know it is one fourth of the diameter of the mine steel. So, that is equal to 20 by 4, so 5 mm or 6 mm, so whichever is maximum. So, less than 6 mm you cannot provide. So, I have chosen the diameter to be 6 mm. So, as I told you practically 8 mm uh, dia is uh, more suitable, but however I am going for uh, 6 mm dia ties. The spacing of the tie is uh, list of the following means uh, it should be less than 300 mm. So, that is a constant value suggested by the code, 16 times the diameter of the mine bar. So, mine diameter is uh, 20 mm, so 16 into 20, so that is 320 mm. And we also have one more thing for checking that is least lateral dimension. So, here the column is 425 by 550, so the least value is 425 and we have these three uh, values to identify the spacing. So, the minimum of these three is uh, 300 mm. So, obviously, so we can provide 6 mm dia stirrups at 300 mm center to center. Now, what is the type of the stirrup? Is it a single tie arrangement, double tie arrangement or a triple tie arrangement and whether you have to provide a open tie or close tie, all these things need to be identified. So, let us see the arrangement of the ties here. So, you can make out the size of the column. So, 425 by 550. First, I request the students to draw the diagram, put the arrangement of the reinforcement, identify the effective cover and then identify the two important things. So, this is what the effective cover is. The effective cover is uh, the nominal cover of uh, 40 mm to the face of the mine steel plus of the diameter of the steel. So, in this case it is 50 mm. So, here again it is 50 mm. So, from 425, if you remove 50 plus 50, 100. So, between the two longitudinal bars, corner to corner bars is 325 mm. And in fact, this 325 is greater than 300 mm, obviously. So, we need to introduce one bar here. So, that is the reason why this type of configuration with one bar at the center of the shorter dimension. And at the same time, you need to identify what is the distance between these two corner bars. So, 325 mm and if that is more than 48 times the diameter of the tie, 48 times the diameter of the tie is uh, 2 to 288. It means, so in this particular case 325 is really more than 288. It means, we have more of concrete in the shorter direction for confining. So, the confinement provided by the tie which is 6 mm in diameter is not sufficient. So, that is the reason why we have to provide the 6 mm tie, but in the closed forum. So, that is what uh, the meaning of uh, this thing 48 times the diameter of the tie. And in fact, uh, if you go for uh, 8 mm, so th then 
probably this condition may not be satisfied or as the diameter of the tie increases, so this 325 will be definitely be less than 48 times the diameter of the tie. In that case, a open tie is sufficient in that direction. So, if that is the case, I would have simply provided, please see the cursor. So, this is what the open tie. I would have simply provided one open tie in the direction of the width, but in this case, it is not possible to provide open tie. Now, let us uh, see the other uh, dimension. So, 550 is what the dimension that is capital D. Again, subtracting 50 50 mm of cover at the ends, then what the dimension we have that is 450 mm. In fact, this 450 mm is also greater than 48 times the diameter of the tie, whether you go for 6 mm or even 8 mm in this case. So, this dimension is definitely be more. So, along the dimension that is capital D and also along the dimension small b. So, 48 times the diameter of the tie is smaller, obviously not only in the direction of the width, but also in the direction of uh, the uh, another dimension. So, we need to tie the concrete, confine the concrete by providing this type of arrangement, a sort of uh, closed tie. And you may ask a question whether we cannot uh, eliminate the tie. So, that is not possible because the distance between these two successive bar is uh, more than uh, 75. So, that is not possible, but he again here the distance between these two bar uh, is uh, 225. So, greater than 75. So, you really cannot uh, eliminate this bar from tying. So, that type of a situation whether to eliminate or not comes into picture when you have too many number of bars. So, where the distance between the two successive bars is less than 75. If that is the case, one of the alternative bars can be left uh, from tying. So, this type of thing we can see in the subsequent uh, diagrams. Now, this is what the best possible uh, arrangements you can think of, but I have seen uh, students sometimes providing three ties for this arrangement. So, covering the first four bars, you can think of one rectangular tie and similarly for the bottom, you can think of putting one rectangular tie, means it will be two rectangular ties in the direction of width. And again, in the direction of the depth, again we need to have one rectangular tie and one more rectangular tie something like this. So, with that uh, we need to have four rectangular ties at the same level at the spacing of 300 mm that has been determined. So, that is going to be a very complicated arrangement. The amount of reinforcement also will be a uh, more and the code has suggested this type of arrangement. So, it is called as two tie arrangement. So, that is what I have uh, written at the bottom. So, this is what the correct configuration of the ties with two ties arrangement where one is a rectangular tie going the corner bars going around the corner bars and one some sort of a uh, uh, rhombus type of tie covering the remaining four bars provided at the center of the sides. With this two tie arrangement uh, all the criteria has been satisfied and this is the best possible arrangement of tie what you can think of for this particular problem. Suppose, uh, if you increase the number of bars, what happens? So, if uh, nothing is mentioned about the diameter and number of bars in the examination, the so students can choose the diameter and the number in such a way that they can provide some correct uh, configuration. But uh, if a particular diameter is specified in the examination, provide 12 mm diameter or 16 mm diameter bars, then obviously, the number of bars uh, will be more. Then how to make uh, the arrangement of reinforcement in such situation? Now, for that uh, I have taken uh, one more configuration. In fact, uh, we can see uh, one more additional uh, configuration later. So, the dimension of the column has not been changed. It is going to be 425 by 550 that has been retained constant. But what I have done is to get the required area which is 1 percent, I have provided 12 bars of 16 mm diameter. So, with this 12 bars of 16 mm dia, so uh, area of 16 mm being uh, 201. So, 12 into 201 is uh, 2412. So, in fact, this area is slightly more than what the area that is really required, but it is okay. But what is the type of configuration? So, this is what the configuration. So, you can first arrange the mine bars, but along the direction of the width as I told you, you have to introduce one bar at the center because this dimension is more than 325. So, sorry, this is 325 actually more than 300. So, you have to have one bar. So, so that uh, three bars will be there along uh, B and again here three bars. So, the remaining six bars we have to keep it like this. So, three along the width 
and this is uh, another uh, 3, so that uh, totally 12 bars are there. Now, what is that uh, we have to do as far as uh, the arrangement of the tie? Is it a 2 tie arrangement or a 3 tie arrangement or something like 4 tie arrangement that need to be identified? Now, what I have done in this case is kindly see the distance between the 2 successive bars. The distance between the 2 successive bars in this case is 225, so greater than 75. So, again this is not less than 75, that is what the meaning is. So, if this were to be less than 75, I would have avoided this from tying, then this is to be tied. So, from this corner, so this is to be avoided, means uh, so the 2 corner bars and 1 central bar need to be tied and leaving these 2 bars, if this distance is less than 75, but in this case it is not less than 75. So, kindly see here this 225 is uh, wrong because 550 minus of 2 covers, it is 450. So, 450 is what the space occupied by these 4 spacing. So, 450 divided by 4 if you do it, it is 112.5. So, this distance, the distance between the 2 successive bars is 111, 112.5. So, definitely greater than 75. So, you cannot eliminate the alternate bars from tying. All the bars need to be tied is uh, what the thing is. Now, with that, uh, what I have done is, so I have tied, so the first 4 bars, you can see the color of the tie, so the block tie, what is that block tie? So, one corner bar here and this corner bar, sorry, this is not the corner bar, first corner bar and this and again the 2 symmetrically opposite bars. So, these 4 bars are taken and one tie has been provided and later, so you can see this uh, blue tie, so with this blue tie, so, these 2 corner bars and along with these 2 bars have been tied, means 8 bars has been tied here, but we have 4 bars at the center of each of the side, so they have not been tied. So, again putting one diagonal, putting one rhombus type of tie, so these 4 bars can also be tied. So, we have 3 ties at a particular level, 2 rectangular ties and 1 this rhombus type of tie. So, 3 ties covering all the 12 bars, but all the ties are closed tie. So, this is uh, what the configuration in case you go for 12 bars of 16 mm dia. So, what is important is to measure uh, the distance between the 2 corner bars. If it is more than 48 times the dia, then it is a uh, open closed tie. If it is less, then it is a open tie. So, kindly say as the dimension of the column is larger as we have in this particular case, something like 550, 600, 650, something like that, it is obviously going to be closed type. Then what is to be identified is if you have too many number of bars, whether all the bars need to be tied or the alternate bars can be left from tying, the remaining bars can be tied otherwise. So, that has to be decided based on this distance. So, the distance between the 2 successive bars, if it is less than 75 alternate bars can be avoided from tying, otherwise all bars need to be avoided. So, this is uh, what the two simple uh, logic you need to remember, so that the best possible configuration of uh, the ties can be identified. I have taken one more uh, uh, configuration. So, in the previous case, uh, the size of the column is uh, 425 into 550, but what I have done is, uh, I have decreased the uh, width slightly smaller, so the depth, the another dimension has been increased marginally, such that uh, the column size is 400 mm by 600 mm with an aspect ratio of 1.5, 600 is 1.5 times of small b that is 400. The area of the steel again it is 1 percent of the gross area, so I am not going to change the number of bars, again it is going to be 12 bars of uh, 16 mm dia, so if you want you can increase the number of bars. Uh, by going for 12 mm bars, then the configuration will be again different. Now, with this 12 bars of uh, 16 mm dia, what I have done is, uh, so I have not put any bar along the width, kindly see here, no bar is required here, you can keep if you want, uh, but if you see the cover is uh, something like 50 mm, here again it is 50 mm, but the actual cover is uh, 40 plus 16 by 2, 48 that has been rounded off to 20 mm. So, obviously, so 400 minus of uh, 50 plus 50, 100, that is 300, so that is what I have written here. So, since this uh, distance is uh, not exceeding 300, it is exactly equal to 300 mm. 
So, I have not put any reinforcement at the center of the width. If you want, you can keep the configuration will be more or less same as what the configuration that has been discussed previously. But all the reinforcement I am keeping along the direction of the depth, along the longer dimension. So, you can measure here 2 plus 2 plus 2, it is 6 rods at the uh, top and another 6 rods at the bottom. So, what is the distance between these two successive bars? So, the dimension being 600. So, from 600 removing 2 covers 100 mm. So, what we have is uh, 500. So, this 500 if you calculate 48 times the day of the tie, whether you go for 6 mm tie or even uh, 8 mm tie. So, this 500 is greater than this uh, 48 times the day of the tie. In this particular case, 6 mm day of tie is being used. So, 288 is uh, what this value. So, we have more concrete in the curve to be confined. So, obviously, we need to go for uh, closed tie and it is not the open tie. And also, you can see the distance between the successive bars. So, out of 600, if you cover, if you subtract uh, 2 covers, it is 500. And how many uh, clear distances we have? So, the effective distances 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in other words, 500 divided by 5 means uh, 100. So, this is what the distance between the successive bars. Again, this 100 is uh, greater than 75. So, you need to tie all the bars. No bars can be left uh, uh, from tying. So, this is what the best possible arrangement as far as uh, uh, 12 bars of 16 dia is concerned, provided in the dimension of 400 by 600 mm. So, you can also look for uh, one more configuration taking 400 by 600 itself, but the number of bars can be increased. So, instead of uh, 16 mm, if you go for 12 mm dia, then you will be having too many bars, uh, then probably alternate bars can be eliminated. So, I request the students to tie that type of arrangement taking 12 mm dia, number of bars will be too many. So, you can distribute the bars, uh, uh, more number of bars along the depth and maybe one or two along the width. Uh, and say what best configuration of the tie arrangement we will be having with that, num that many number of bars. So, let us see the next problem. So, the previous problem uh, was on rectangular uh, section. So, let us uh, design a circular column, circular column with ties, it is not a spiral column, again it is circular, but uh, circular link as tie is provided to carry the same ultimate load of 2500 kilo Newton. The unsupported length of the column is uh, 3 meter. Ends of the column are effectively held in position, but not against rotation. So, this is what the change that has been introduced in this problem. So, ends of the column are effectively held in position. There is no translational uh, effect. It is a sort of braced column. There is no sway effect, but uh, not held against rotation, it really rotates, definitely the ends of the column are uh, uh, hinged or pinned. So, that uh, the effective length of the column is exactly equal to the unsupported length or the visible height of the column. M 20 concrete and Fe 415 steel uh, is what the grades of the material. So, kindly write uh, the given information, F C K being 20 MPa, F I 415 MPa, ultimate load 2500 kilo Newton and again assuming 1 percent of steel. So, A S C is 0 0.01 A G, area of the concrete A C equal to 0 0.99 A G, same as the previous problem. Again the same formula, ultimate load carrying capacity of the column considering 5 percent of eccentricity. So, P U is equal to 0 0.4 F C K A C plus 0 0.67 F Y A C. So, I kindly make the proper substitution 2500 into 1000 ultimate load. So, substituting the remaining uh, values. So, we have uh, A G equal to 233645 mm square. Then what is the dimension of the column? It is a circular column. Obviously, we need to calculate the diameter equating this value to pi d square by 4 d is 545.4 mm. So, that can be rounded off to 550. So, that is what the practical dimension. Sometimes, you may get uh, 529 and we may uh, convert that to 530. 
but 530 may not be a practical column, many a times uh, 450. So, at certain regular intervals of uh, 20 or 25 is what the practical column, because we need to have uh, uh, a particular type of uh, uh, the scaffold, so that uh, mold, so that you can the practical column. So, any dimension you cannot take just like that. So, in this particular case, so the diameter of the column is uh, taken as 550 mm. So, the area of the steel, so just 1 percent of this AG, so the first 4 values if we take 4 digits, so 2336 mm square. Provide 8 bars of 20 mm, so that uh, the area provided is uh, 2512. So, 2512 is slightly more than uh, what is required, so you can definitely go for uh, 8 uh, bars. If you, if you go for 7 bars, uh, then it is not possible. So, 8 of uh, 20 is the best combination for this circular column. Again, we need to check the shortness. Here, uh, LEX equal to LEY because it is a circular column like square. So, both LEX and LEY are same. That is equal to unsupported length of uh, 3000. So, 3000 divided by 550. So, it is more but less than 12. So, therefore, the column is short. So, the column is short not only in the direction of X, but also in the direction of Y because it is a circular column. So, one check uh, is sufficient to declare that the column is short. So, again uh, check the minimum eccentricity based on uh, the formula. Here the minimum eccentricity with respect to the major axis E minimum X that is equal to E minimum Y because it is circular L u X by 500 plus D by 30. If you substitute L u X 3000 by 500 plus the dimension 550 by 30. So, the answer is 24.22 mm or 20 mm being the minimum whichever is greater. So, 24.22 is what the actual eccentricity to be considered. Check whether this eccentricity is less than 5 percent of the dimension. So, the dimension is uh, 550. So, 5 percent of the dimension is 27.5 mm. So, the dimension can really take 27.5 mm of eccentricity, but what is uh, to be considered according to the code is only 24.22. So, definitely the minimum eccentricity criteria is satisfied not only with respect to the major axis, even with respect to the minor axis of bending. So, that uh, minimum eccentricity problem is not there. So, whatever the formula for the axial load carrying capacity P u that has been used that is ok. Then the design of uh, transverse reinforcement. As usual, the diameter is uh, one fourth of the diameter of uh, the maximum mine bar, but here the diameters are same. So, it is uh, 20 by 4 equal to 5 mm, but subjected to a minimum of 6 mm. So, let us uh, provide uh, either 6 mm or 8 mm. So, what has been provided here is 6 mm. The spacing should be less than 300 mm, 16 times of uh, the diameter of the mine bar. So, 320 mm, least lateral dimension is uh, 550. So, whichever is minimum is the answer. So, obviously, 300 mm center to center is what the spacing of the circular type. So, 6 mm at 300 mm center to center or 8 mm at 300 mm center to center is what the circular type. Then what is the arrangement? The arrangement is something like this. So, if you go for uh, 8 rods, the 8 rods can be distributed uh, symmetrically. So, keep these 2 bars and these 2 bars exactly at uh, these extreme uh, locations and in between the two bars we can identify the remaining bar. So, that uh, with uh, 8 rods, so writing the cross section also is going to be very simple. So, 8 of 20 is what the mine bar tie ash 6 at 300 and the dimension in the form of diameter is 550, a very simple configuration. If you want you can even write the elevation of the column. So, write the elevation and uh, see that uh, all these uh, mine reinforcements are uh, projected in the elevation and that is what uh, the detail uh, information regarding uh, the cross section and elevation of the column is. Now, I am just trying to explain what happens to this particular problem in case uh, you go for higher percentage of steel. We tried with 1 percent like that you can try with uh, 2 percent, 3 percent, 4 percent at one stage you can go for uh, 6 percent of steel. 
and 6 percent of steel is not going to create any practical problem because today the type of the concrete available is uh, definitely very good, high performance concrete we have, absolutely there is no problem of uh, any difficulty regarding the placement of concrete. So, up to 6 percent the maximum uh, recommended by the code can be provided, but here I am trying with 3 percent of steel what happens to the load carrying capacity. So, since the steel has been increased by 2 times the load carrying capacity of the column contributed by the steel increases by 2 times, increases by 3 times in fact compare it to the previous problem. So, 0 0.67 FYAAC, so this particular uh, contribution increases because of 3 percent, the previously I have put 1 percent, but uh, this is uh, going to be more or less same, but the area of the concrete has to be decreased marginally maybe by about 2 percent of additional steel but the contribution point of view it is not a significant reduction, more or less the same contribution as we have uh, for the previous problem as far as concrete is concerned, but as far as steel is concerned straight away 3 time increase uh, in the contribution we will be having. So, what happens as a result of that? So, substituting all these things uh, appropriately, so we get uh, 16.1 ag and that is to be equated to so this uh, ultimate load. So, in the previous problem we had something like 7.1 or so, now here it is 16.1, so definitely the gross area of the concrete decreases substantially. So, what is the diameter that is really required? So, again equating this value to pi d square by 4, so the required diameter is 444.7, so this can be rounded off to 450 and in fact this is the practical dimension also. So, provide 450 diameter of uh, the column. Then what is the steel? The steel is 3 percent of uh, the gross area, it is not just 1 percent. So, we cannot uh, simply take 1 percent of this, we have to be very careful. So, 3 percent is what the steel we have assumed. So, 3 percent of AG is uh, 4656. So, then what is the number of bars? So, we can go for more number of smaller diameter, but in this case I have uh, selected 28 mm bar with an area of 615, 8 numbers. So, minimum number of bars in circular is 6, so with this 8, so that criteria uh, is also satisfied and the total steel is 4926, what is required is something like 46, so 4926 is what the area. So, we cannot provide 7, if you provide 7, so definitely the provided area will be much much less compared to the required area. So, 8 of uh, 28 mm dia is uh, just ok, though we have provided slightly more steel, so there is no other option because it is circular, so all diameter need to be uh, same, so this is the best possible arrangement, 8 rods of 28, but what is the previous one? So, 8 rods of 20, that previous problem dimension is 550, that 550 has been reduced to 450, a substantial saving in the concrete, size of the column also has been reduced. So, the clear area between the column also increases, but you have to see whether the column is going to become slender or not with this uh, reduced dimension of 450. So, that is what the check we need to make. So, let us uh, do the check as usual. So, LEX is equal to LEY that is uh, 3000. So, now it is less than 12, so the column is definitely short. So, again the minimum eccentricity if you calculate. So, that is uh, 21 uh, mm LUX by 500, this D earlier it was 550, now it is 450, so with that uh, that is 21 uh, mm subjected to a minimum of 20, so 20 m, 21 is uh, what the actual eccentricity of the column. So, let us say how much of eccentricity that can be permitted by the size, so 0 0.5 percent of the dimension which is 22.5 mm. So, since 21 is less than 22.5, so the column is ok from the minimum eccentricity point of view as well. Now, design of transverse tie as usual, so 300 mm, one, so diameter is one fourth of the diameter of the mine bar, so mine bar is uh, 28 mm here, 28 by 4 is 7, so we have to provide uh, uh, 7 mm or 6 mm whichever is greater, so it is 8 mm. So, what is the spacing of the transverse steel? So, 1 is 300 less than 300. 16 times the diameter of the main bar 448, least lateral dimension 450, obviously we have to provide 300 mm. So, 
8 bars of uh, 28 dia is what the mine bar, 8 diameter tie at 300 mm is what the stirrups. So, this is what the cross section of the column. So, in the earlier case 8 of 20, but here it is 8 of 28, steel is more, but the diameter was 550 in the previous case, but the diameter has been reduced to 450. So, this is uh, what uh, the sort of trial and error the, the student uh, can think uh, uh, from the point of uh, what dimension that is really required uh, for the practical columns. So, sometimes uh, the column might become uh, slender and if it is a slender column, obviously additional moments comes into picture and even to design a short column, so we will be having a lot of other alternatives. So, only thing is uh, we have to make uh, the best possible arrangement of the mine reinforcement and also the ties. Now, as far as uh, the rectangular or square columns are concerned, we need to provide a two tie system or three tie system. So, multiple tie system comes into picture open tie or closed tie, but if you have a circular column, this is the only one particular type of arrangement. We really do not have any other uh, type of arrangement, it is just a link. So, you kindly see this. So, this is what the arrangement irrespective of the dimension of the column and irrespective of the number of bars. But I have seen students uh, writing uh, some sort of a open ties also covering uh, these two rods or maybe these rods and they make hodgepodge type of diagrams. So, we will not be having any such type of arrangement. This is the best possible and this is the only type of arrangement you can think of in a circular column. So, along the diameter you are not supposed to introduce any open tie. So, that open tie is not going to serve any purpose and if you simply introduce these open ties something like this covering all these bars, then there will be so much of congestion of the reinforcement and you really cannot uh, put the concrete from the top. Being a circular column with a circular tie, what the confinement you are going to get from this circular dimension is the maximum confinement. You really need not have to worry about the concrete, whatever is the dimension of the circular column in terms of diameter, the concrete inside is definitely confined, absolutely there is no problem associated with the column. So, this is the only type of arrangement, no additional ties we need to provide in a circular column. So, let us see what happens if you provide a still higher percentage of steel. If the size of the column provided is less than that provided above, then the minimum eccentricity criteria may not be satisfied. Then E minimum is more and then the column is to be designed as a uniaxially loaded column or a biaxially loaded column depending on the situation. So, in case of a circular column, it is going to be biaxially loaded. In case of a rectangular column, so it can be uniaxially with respect to major axis or sometimes it can be biaxially loaded column. So, that is the reason why we cannot reduce the dimension of the column simply by increasing the percentage of steel. So, probably in this particular column, if you go for 4 percent of the steel, then the area of the concrete uh, decreases further, then the dimension will be much less and probably the column may fail from the minimum eccentricity. In that situation, the column has to be designed as a uniaxially loaded column taking the eccentricity based on that uh, taking the bending moment uh, generated from uh, that minimum eccentricity. Anyway, that problem I have not tried, so I request the students to try that type of problem as well. In fact, uh, we also have some set of graphs available in uh, SP 16. So, using those uh, charts, it is possible to design uh, the axially loaded columns, though it is not a part of the uh, curriculum, there is no examination problems in that direction but this is uh, one type of problem uh, I request the students to attempt uh, by looking to the charts of SP 16, charts for axially loaded column. So, in fact, uh, the usage of this particular chart will also be discussed again when I go for uh, bi axially loaded column. So, similarly, the other uh, type of columns can be designed like square or rectangular. Now, let us see the last design, the design of a spiral column design a circular column with ties. This is actually the tie means the tie in the form of a spiral, that is what the meaning. In fact, uh, do not get confused uh, uh, this tie, it is a spiral tie. To carry an ultimate load of uh, 2500 kilo Newton, the unsupported length is 3 meter, 
the ends of the columns are effectively held in position, but uh, not against rotation. The grade of the concrete and steel is M20 and uh, Fe415. So, it is the same problem. So, write all these things and then again 1 percent of steel has been assumed. So, that the area of the concrete is 0 0.99 ag and uh, we have this particular formula. So, what is the load carried by the spiral column? It is 1.05 times what the load that is carried by the tied column. So, 5 percent extra load carrying capacity is taken provided some condition regarding how much of spiral you are going to put is satisfied. If slightly more spiral is provided then 1.05 uh, comes into picture otherwise uh, the load taken by the spiral column is same as that of the tied column. So, including this 1.05. So, I have 11.24 AG equal to the ultimate load with that AG works out to be this much equating this to pi d square by 4. So, diameter is 530 mm as I can ask 550 mm of the tight column. So, 550 is what the dimension in the previous problem, but now that has been reduced to 530 because of this 1.05. So, the area of steel is 1 percent. So, 7 bars of 20 mm can be provided. So, the total area is 2196 marginally less compared to what is required. So, practically it is ok. So, we have reduced 1 bar from 8 to 7, the dimension has been reduced from 550 to 530. A slight reduction in the dimension of the column, area of steel also will be less means both concrete area and steel area required is less. So, this is uh, what the design is and uh, this is what the configuration of the spiral column cross sections looks something like this. So, this is what the longitudinal elevation of the spiral column. The pitch should not be less than 25, it should not be more than 75, this is what the requirement and also we have one more pitch should not be less than 3 times the diameter of the spiral and it can go up to 1 6 the core diameter, 1 6 of the core diameter is 75 mm in this particular case. So, it should be more than 25, 3 times the diameter of the spiral is 24. Obviously, it is more than 25, but it should be less than 75. If you provide the pitch between this range, uh, then that 5 percent extra what you have chosen can be identified, can be taken provided the volume of the spiral in comparison with the volume of the core is uh, more than the value given by that particular formula of I S code. So, kindly see this uh, configuration, outer diameter is uh, so, you know it is uh, 550 mm. So, the nominal cover is up to the face of the mine steel, but here I have taken the nominal cover as 40 mm, but up to the face of the spiral out to out dimension now becomes 550 minus 40 minus 40 that is 450. So, that is uh, what the core diameter measured from outside to outside of the spiral. With that we have a very small formula that has been derived uh, in the previous class. So, the volume of the helical steel is given by this and volume of the core concrete is given by this. Volume of the helical steel to the core concrete uh, is uh, simplified as this and this volume of the helical steel to the volume of the core should not be less than, it should be more than this it means this is what the formula you need to remember. A very simple formula if students can remember, so it is possible to identify what is the pitch of the spiral steel. The same thing I have written here. So, kindly see here after you substitute uh, all the values, AG is 550, AC is 450. So, 4 into cross sectional area of the spiral, this is the only change 450 into SV. SV is the unknown, so this SV the pitch is to be determined. If you go for 8 mm dia spiral coil, then the area of the coil is pi d square by 4 that is 50 square meter mm and substituting this in the same formula. So, if you simplify the spacing that is the pitch SV is 66.23 say 65 mm. So, in fact, this 65 mm is uh, in between uh, that 25 and 75 what has been seen in the previous slide. Now, if I go for 6 mm dia spiral, the area of the spiral is 28 uh, square mm. So, obviously, the pitch will be smaller because the diameter of the spiral is also smaller. So, that pitch is 35 mm. So, this also satisfies the requirement. So, obviously, we can either go for 8 mm at uh, a pitch of 65 or you can go for 6 mm spiral 
but at a pitch of 35 both satisfies the requirement. This is one small uh, point I would like to share. So, in case of tight column, what is the length of this link that has to go around the main bar? So, that is 8 times the diameter of the stirrup provided if it is goes in this direction like a 90 degree bend. If you are bending something like this 90 plus another 45, 135 degree bend, then the extra length of this hook is 6 times the diameter of the tie. And if you are going something like this where the stirrup has been bent backwards by an angle of 180 degree, then the extra length of the hook is 0.4 times the diameter of the tie. So, what you need to remember is 8 times or 6 times or 4 times the diameter of the tie measured from the center of the main bar is what the projection of the hook in case of a stirrup. If this is what you follow, then everything will be fine and this is generally recommended. So, this is what the type of uh, hook we will be giving. In case of seismic areas, so this is uh, what has been uh, uh, recommended so that the confinement will be better. If not this, so this is the best uh, and this type of thing uh, better to avoid, but if you want to give it, but this minimum of 8 times the diameter of the tie is what the length of the hook from the center. So, if this is uh, followed, everything will be okay. So, like that uh, we can also work out uh, many more problems. So, since the sufficient time is not there, so I will be stopping uh, at this stage. So, thank you very much for your uh, patience listening. If you have uh, any questions, you can ask.